Welcome to section 6.6. .6. All right, gentle people, let's start off real easy. Look at this following equilibrium, and what you'll note is on this equilibrium, I've given you guys an equilibrium constant, a k value of 115. So do me a favor, pause the video right now, go ahead and write the equilibrium constant expression, meaning I want you to write k equals and everything in terms of concentration. All right, gentle people, what you should have done is products over reactants raised to the stoichiometric coefficients. So in this case, HF squared divided by H2 times F2. So let's go ahead and delve into one type of very popular problem. And that is, they give you an equilibrium, they give you the initial concentrations, and they want you to figure out the concentrations at equilibrium. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna set up the problem, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my reaction where I don't have any products, but I initially have two of my reactants present, H2 and F2, one molar and two molar respectively. And based on the information on this slide, I want you to calculate the concentration of H2, F2, and HF at equilibrium. Now the way to do this is we're going to go ahead and invoke what's called the ice table. So the end goal of here is I want you guys to build this table right here. What I want you to do is have this slide handy and I'm gonna show you how to build this ice table. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we do when we build an ice table is we're gonna write down our equilibrium reaction. And so the reaction that we're interested in is H2 plus F2 is in equilibrium with 2HF. And it is important that you have a balanced equation. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down the letters I, C, and E. So I stands for the initial concentrations. So in this particular problem, we are given our initial concentrations. What we have is we have 1.0 molar of our H2, we have 2.0 of our F2, and we are told in this case that we have zero HF. Now I want you to be careful when you're doing your book problems, sometimes they'll say we have our initial reactants of this and this, and they don't mention anything about the products. If they don't mention a compound, you can go ahead and automatically assume that its concentration is zero. So again, to remind you, I stands for initial. And the next letter in our ice table is C. And C stands for the change. So remember, everything is going to go to equilibrium. I want it such that all the concentrations at equilibrium, when I plug it into that equilibrium expression, gets me my Kc or that equilibrium constant. So something has got to change. Now, if you have a reactant or product that is zero, this easily tells you if you're gonna make something or you're going to consume something you cannot have zero in your equilibrium concentrations. So what that means is that anytime I have a zero on the product or reactant side, that means that is gonna tell me that I am going to have to make some products or reactants. Or in other words, the change that is gonna happen with my products is I am going to make products. So this is going to be a positive change. Now, if I make products, that means that I have to consume reactants. Or in other words, the change in my reactants is going to be negative. I have to eat some of that concentration up. Now, the next thing we do with change is we're gonna look at our stoichiometric coefficients. So in this case, there's a one, a one, and a two. So what I'm gonna say is that this is gonna be minus x, minus one x, plus 2x. So what I did is I carried over whatever coefficient was in my balanced equilibrium reaction. Now the last thing is going to be E, and this is gonna be the concentration at equilibrium. E is going to always equal I plus C. 
So what I'm saying is I have an initial concentration, there's going to be some change, and then I'm going to get my equilibrium. And so that equilibrium is going to be based off the initial concentration and whatever change to get to that equilibrium. So in this case, I'm going to have 1 minus 1x, 2 minus 1x, and then for hf, 0 plus 2x, or simply 2x. So these are going to be the expressions at equilibrium. So once again, real quickly, I initial, write your initial concentrations. C for change, go ahead and look at what is going to be made. So in this case, I'm going to make products. I'm going to go ahead and take away reactants. So minuses for my reactants, positives for my products. And then again, look at the coefficients and then go ahead and put x, 2x, 3x, whatever that coefficient is. And then finally, E equilibrium, add together I plus C to get your E. Now, once you have this, what you can do is you can go ahead and remember that you have an equilibrium constant. So what I asked in this problem is I want you to tell me what are the concentrations at equilibrium and right now we have a variable so let's see if we can make this into an equation so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use that k expression that you guys wrote for me now i can go ahead and plug in the values now remember the k expression are is the concentrations at equilibrium so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that last row and plug it into my k expression so the concentration of HF is going to be 2x. The concentration of H2 is going to be that 1 minus x. And the concentration of F2 is going to be 2.0 minus x. And remember, I told you that k equals 115. And so now what I have is I have one equation and one variable. So I can go ahead and solve for x. Now that sounds a lot simpler than it actually is. So I have this equation right here and I got to solve for x. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and combine like variables. You guys can go ahead and foil the bottom, manipulate the equation, and what you get is this polynomial expression. 111x squared minus 345x plus 230 equals zero. And this might haunt you guys, but this is in the form of the quadratic equation. And so what we can do is once we use the algebra to combine like terms, is we can go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Now, if your calculator has a formula solver, uh, you guys are welcome to do this. This is not a math class. Uh, I will give you this expression, and on your equation sheet, you guys will be given the quadratic formula so that you can solve these types of polynomials. Now, if I go ahead and solve this, I get two solutions. I get two answers. X can be 2.14 and x can be 0.968 molar. The next quiz question is, which of these is the correct answer? All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you have to understand is that we live in the real world. And so we have to have values that actually make sense. So here's where our two values are, 2.14 and 0.968. Now remember, at equilibrium, the concentration of H2 is 1 minus x. So if I were to go ahead and put this value in here, 1 minus 2.14, well, that would get me negative 1.14. And this doesn't make physical sense. There's no way you can have a negative concentration of anything. What this means is this solution doesn't make physical sense, and it is incorrect. This other solution, well, it works just fine. So when you guys use the quadratic formula, one of the solutions they give you will be dumb. 
It doesn't make any sense to use that. It will give you a negative concentration. So throw that away and use the one that only gives you positive concentrations. So in this case, X equals 0.968. Now with that said, we can go ahead and solve what the question asked for. And that was, what are the concentrations at equilibrium? And so we can take that last line in that ice table where it said the concentration of H2 was one minus X, F2 was two minus X, and then HF was two X. Now that I know what X is, I can go ahead and plug it in and you guys can see the mathematics out of this. So all of these are my equilibrium concentrations. Now, once we've established our equilibrium concentrations, it's a good idea to check things out and make sure that our calculations are correct and our rounding was okay. So here are our concentrations at equilibrium. Here's our equilibrium expression. I can plug in my HF value. I can plug in H2. I can plug in F2. And once I go ahead and put those numbers in, I get a K value of 117. And this is what I wanted to point out to you guys. What you guys will notice is because we're using the quadratic formula, since there's a lot of manipulations, what you guys will have are a lot of rounding. Now it's okay. As long as your answer is within 5%, you did this problem correctly. If you get outside of 5%, that's a good indication that you messed up the quadratic equation and that you should check your answer. So make sure that you don't do something silly, like forget something when doing these problems. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's finish this off by you guys doing an ice table for me. So go ahead and look at this quiz question and go ahead and tell me what the equilibrium pressure is of N2O4. All right, gentle people, let's go ahead and practice making an ice table. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down our equation. So N2O4 is an equilibrium with 2NO2. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write our letters I, C, and E. So let's go ahead and plug in some values. So our initial concentrations. You'll note it didn't mention anything about the initial concentration of N2O4. So if that's the case, we're going to put a zero in for its initial concentration. However, it did mention what NO2 was. It was three ATMs. So I'm going to put a three there. Now, I want you guys to think, am I going to make reactants or products here? If you guys look at this, I have zero reactants. And like I told you guys, you can't have zero, so I have to make reactants in this case. Or in other words, this reaction is going to go in the reverse direction. So to make my reactants, I have to consume my products, so I'm going to have a negative there. There's going to be a negative change in its pressure. So let's go ahead and put in our stoichiometric coefficients. There's a 1 here, so this is going to be 1x. And then there's a 2, so this is going to be 2x right there. So now what I'm going to do is i plus c. So this is going to be 0 plus 1x, which is simply x. And this is going to be 3 minus 2x. So let's go ahead and write our kp expression. So kp is going to be the pressure of NO2. And it has a 2 there, so I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to have the pressure of N2O4 on the bottom. So let's go ahead and plug in our equilibrium pressures. This is going to be 3 minus 2x, and I'm going to square that, and then I'm going to divide this by x. Now remember, I gave you what the Kp was. That equals 0 0.315, and that's from the problem. So I can go ahead and rearrange this. You guys can do the algebra to it, and what you should get is this expression here, 4x squared 
minus 12.315x plus 9 equals 0. So go ahead and use the quadratic equation or use your solver in your calculator and you should get two answers, 1.885 and then of course x equals 1.193. Now what you'll know is this answer, if I try to plug it in here, will get me a negative concentration. So this cannot be the answer. However, if I plug this value into 3 minus 2x, I still get a positive concentration. So there's no discrepancies with this last answer. So that means x equals 1.193. But you'll remember that that is also the concentration of N2O4 at equilibrium. And so that is going to be my pressure at equilibrium. So one little warning for you guys. Uh, I showed you the way that the book does it. This is the way that most people does it. Alex does it slightly different. So just get through Alex the way that it asks you to do it. Either route you choose will get you the correct answer. Uh, so if you're filling out the Alex table, just do what they ask. If they want the answer at the end of the day, you can do it the way that the book and I show you. Well, I hope that makes sense, Chem1B, and remember to stay safe.